Hello and welcome to this CoreLogix training video. Today we're going to explore logging in the CoreLogix UI. We're going to look at some of the basics today. So this is just the features that exist uh, in the interface, as well as some advanced use cases for how you can bring all those features together. So we'll look at filtering, querying, uh, customizing the interface, changing columns, adjusting the layout, saving views, loading views, and much, much more. So to begin with, let's work out how to get to the logging screen. It's very simple and very straightforward. Just hit the explore button. This will take you over to the logging UI. You can see that it all loads nice and fast. Um, so firstly, um, we're just going to have a look at some of the fields that exist around the page, and then we'll start looking at query. So to begin with, on the left hand side, you can see uh, that we have views, uh, which allow you to save different, um, different queries, different columns, uh, different customizations in the UI so that people can share them. Uh, you can have the logs in the archive mode. We'll get into that in a moment. That enables uh, querying against your logs or querying against your long-term archive. Then we have filters. So we have this hidden one here, which is Teams. This enables you to issue queries against multiple teams if you're a member of multiple different teams. Then you have the application filter and the subsystem filter. Application and subsystem are tags that we add to every single value. Um, so whether it's logs, metrics, or traces, every single one has application or subsystem. And finally, severity. Severity uh, is something that's very, very common amongst sort of all logging values. So these are sort of three default ones you get. Um, we'll talk about adding custom filters in a moment. Um, then across the top here, you can see the uh, metrics graph. The metrics graph enables you to uh, render metrics alongside your logs. And this allows you to correlate all of your data together. Uh, finally, up the top right here, you can see the date range. So this is very common amongst most logging solutions. And this allows you to query along um, well-known and well-understood uh, date formats so you can pull your logs from different ranges. However, in CoreLogix, you can also query on tags. Now, tags are events that have happened in the past that somebody has deemed important and they've created a CoreLogix tag for it. And this is, can be anything from a software release, as you can see different versions here, all the way to you know, an event on your website, for example, a sale, anything. Um, so that's just a really uh, nice little feature that means that rather than trying to work out when a release happened, you just jump straight to the tag and use that. So let's look at the last thing that I haven't mentioned yet, which is the query bar. Now, the query search bar uh, supports multiple different languages, which we'll explain in a moment, as well as has some caveats that you really, really need to understand to make sure that you're successful with the logging platform. So first and foremost is Lucene. Uh, everybody knows about Lucene. It's the most common open source query language for log processing. Um, so the CoreLogix uh, processing uh, sort of the pipeline, what happens is data is uh, ingested and then it is analyzed. So you can see here, for example, that we have um, a message associated with uh, the data. Um, and what we're doing here is you see how each one here can be uh, highlighted. This is because this whole message has been broken down into tokens. It looks like on space. Um, now, this has an implication. So for example, if I run a message, I want to run a regex query against it, um, like this. If I run that against message, I don't get anything. And that's because it's been tokenized and analyzed. So the best way, if you want to run regex queries against these kinds of fields, is to add the keyword value onto the end. Now what this will do is it will, um, it will run a query against the unparsed, unanalyzed version of your data. This is because all of your data has a type, so it can be a numeric type, a date type, and so on. Um, when you're running regex queries, uh, it's best to run it against the raw, unfiltered, unanalyzed data. So you can see here, for example, that the message uh, in this document will be yeah, internal. So it's all uppercase uh, letters that match this regex query. That wouldn't work if you didn't use the keyword uh, suffix. So whenever you're running regex, make sure that you uh, use the keyword suffix. This goes for range queries as well, if you want to put the numeric suffix on there and so on. Um, all of this is available in the CoreLogix documentation, so I strongly recommend that you go and read that after watching this video. That's just going to mean you have all of the information that you need to be super successful with the CoreLogix platform. Of course, you don't need to run uh, a full-blown query. You could run, for example, something like this. Um, and that will go and query all the logs that contain the word 500, which as you can see are mostly uh, error and critical because 500 is usually something has gone wrong. Um, so you don't, if you know that like a certain token appears in the, t in the letter, you don't even need to write the query, just write the value that you're interested in and let CoreLogix uh, do the rest. So um, 
You'll also notice as well that as you start to type, you get this really, really nice uh, autocomplete. It's super powerful. So for example, if I want to start typing Kubernetes, I start getting this really, really lovely breakdown of all the different values that are available here. I can run Kubernetes container.name, for example, and it will automatically tell me what the common values are. So this is something that only CoreLogix offers, um, but it enables you to discover your data in a much more effective way. So if you um, don't quite know the values, make sure you leverage the autocomplete there because it's super powerful, it's super efficient, um, and it will mean that you don't have to go searching around your logs. CoreLogix will just tell you what the different values are that are available. And we, we, we track the schemas dynamically, so as new data comes in, the autocomplete will uh, update for you. Of course, this was just um, Lucene, um, and so one of the, the uh, really powerful uh, other options that you've got is Data Prime. Data Prime is our own query language, and it enables you to run uh, very, very sophisticated, very high-level transformations on all of your data. So, for example, if you want, you can run a filter uh, on the message, um, and you can say something like, I don't know, uh, And this will get us back to those internal logs that we found before. Um, so this is just a really, really nice, uh, simple filter, but you can get way more sophisticated. So for example, what you might want to do is do something like this. Um, and you want to run the availability zone. There's that nice autocomplete just jumping straight in for us. And we'll do count, for example. So this is the different AZs that have produced the most logs, um, of the top 10 AZs that have produced the most logs in the past hour. That happened instantly, very, very short, very terse. So if you have more advanced analytics that you want to run and, and calculate uh, on your logs, then definitely look at Data Prime. It's super powerful, super clean. Um, and if you need some help, you can open up the cheat sheet here. And this will give you the full Data Prime documentation as well. So um, that's a little bit about querying. Um, let's have a look at some of the other things that come along with queries. So if we go back to Lucene for a moment, uh, we can just uh, run an open query. Now, if I uh, want to look at a certain cloud account ID, for example, what I can do is I can add this to my query. You'll notice some things have happened here. This highlighting occurs. Uh, so CoreLogix shows you which field it was that was captured by your query so that you know why you're seeing that log after you've run the query. So super, super powerful, really, really easy to use, and uh, makes it far more straightforward. So once you have a view like this that you're really happy with, <clears throat> what you can do is you can save that view. So you can say, for example, uh, my uh, account ID. You can save that and you can save the query and the filters. You can also set this as a default view so that when you open up logs, this is the one that everybody will see straight away. And you can also make it private or shared. So you can customize your own experience or you can customize your entire team's experience. That's up to you. Of course, you can also load views. So when you load views, this will change the columns. It will change uh, the query. It will change the uh, metrics uh, graph, everything. This is a really, really nice way of sharing um, different views that you find useful with your team rather than having to copy and paste, you know, uh, queries in Slack and things like that. That slows you down and slows down your ability to discover new insights. So um, we've talked about a little bit about how the uh, view can be customized. Let's have a look at how you can add new filters. So for example, um, if I'm really interested, let me just load up this, uh, my, my original view. If I'm really interested in this account ID or just the field account ID in general, what I can do is I can add that to the filter list like this. Um, and I'll just move myself. And you can see here that um, now we have only one account ID in here, which is fine. So now we can actually filter on that. And so this is a really nice way of uh, locking down filters. You can combine filters with queries. So run the query and then run further filters. Um, and this just enables you to, um, uh, to, to, to slice the data however you're most comfortable with. Um, Finally, you can uh, take a look, you can uh, render your data in many different ways. So for example, the condensed view will give you a much more information dense version if that's what you want. Um, you can render everything on a single line. Um, these are big documents. Or you can render everything in a list view. This is kind of like a flattened JSON list. And what this will do is it will show you all of the different um, values. It will maintain the structure, but it will just show you the values. It's a really, really nice, really powerful way of uh, rendering out the data. Then we have uh, the archive view. So all of the queries we've run today have been uh, against our frequent search. However, in CoreLogix, you can also the query, that's query the data that's held inside your archive. So the way to do that is 
exactly the same as you would with any other data. So this is data running against S3. I've just pulled back 200,000 uh, log documents the last 15 minutes um, straight from the S3 bucket that uh, is holding customer this, this customer's uh, data. And what this means is that you can push your logs into the archive, but still rapidly access them. And once again, you can use Lucene or Data Prime uh, against that. That's completely up to you. So we've explored um, the UI, how to customize it, how to uh, query the archive, uh, the different logging, for, uh, different ways of rendering out the logs. You can also change the columns that you see, by the way, by hitting this button here. And you can select, for example, uh, the agent, and you can drag that over there. And if you apply that, you'll see where there is a field for that. There is an agent that will be set. And of course, you can just remove it by hitting the, the cross. So um, really, really nice. So we've looked at logs. Let's have a look at this metrics graph really quickly. Um, so with this metrics graph, what you can do is you can select a different aggregation. You can pick a field, for example, load time. You can group it by a label that exists on that field, like city and compare it to a different time. Now, why is this powerful? Well, it's really powerful because sometimes insights exist in the metrics, sometimes they exist in the logs, sometimes they exist in traces. And what we aim to do at CoreLogix is make this information as available to you as possible. So you may see, for example, you may want to experience, for example, okay, there's something weird happening in this metric at this time. And by zooming in on the metrics at that time, you then zoom in on the logs at the same point. And this enables you to completely lock on to where the issue is, whether you're coming at it from a metrics perspective or from a logs perspective. Um, lots of our customers use this kind of functionality and it's very, very, very powerful. So we strongly recommend that you um, get into that. Um, however, of course, um, you may have issues around just sheer volume of logs. So even though I've zoomed in on a, only a few minutes, I have 11,000 documents. It's very difficult to understand what's going on there. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna look at the errors uh, in this time span. Now, 57 is still, is not that many, but it's still a bit difficult to actually see what's going on. And so what you can do is you can switch over to the templates view. Now, what do templates mean? Um, templates are uh, using machine learning to cluster your similar logs together so that you can see which logs are responsible. For example, I have just used the metrics to zoom in on a strange uh, load time variance. I've seen that there are some errors, and then I've used templates to see, well, what are the most common errors? And I can see that 70% of the occurrences were generated by this particular issue. It's actually a security rated log. And then further 12%, they were generated by this uh, data. And what I can do is I can hit on the occurrences graph, and I can see, well, this is the normal amount of this type of log that one expects, and look at this this massive jump that completely deviates away from the data. So you can see how we're using all the different logging features here to bring to, to focus in on a single problem. And likewise, of course, we can explore a given uh, value. So for example, <clears throat> I may want to have a look at IP address. What this allows me to do is look at all the different requests that have come from different IP addresses uh, over the past couple of minutes. This is the power of logregation. It just shows you the variance within the templates, and it'll show you which is the most common error, which is the second most common error, and so on. It's a really, really nice, really clean, really powerful way of analyzing your data without having to do too many uh, different sophisticated things. So what we've done here so far is that we've looked at logging, uh, we've looked at uh, the queries, the different features that exist in the user interface, as well as uh, logregation or templates which enable you to view lots and lots of logs and the variance within those logs in only one place. Super powerful and amazing. You've got to remember that um, this is a really powerful and uh, innovative platform. So give yourself some time, get used to it, um, and make sure that you take advantage of how CoreLogix correlates your data. So start with metrics, move to logs, and so on. Hopefully this has been useful. And if you have any questions, our customer service team are always there to help. Thank you very much.